Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about number and algebra. Now in particular this video is going to cover the topic of algebra and in that subcategory known as mixed operations. So before we begin let's take a look at a quick description of what this topic is all about. So this topic, multiple operations in mathematics, refer to the four operators of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. When a number sentence has all four operations, we need to remember bod mass for the order of operations. Brackets, orders, powers, or roots, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. These questions will often require you to use multiple arithmetic operations rather than one. Okay, so now that we've read that short description, we kind of get a general idea of what we're going to encounter in these types of questions. So these are going to be algebra questions, which means that fundamentally they're basically like puzzle solving questions where we don't know some parts of the puzzle and those parts are usually going to be numbers that are missing and those are usually represented with al the alphabet letters or any kind of symbol. Now, what makes this subcategory special is that sometimes you're actually going to need to use a variety of different operations. So we saw that in the description here. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division might all be part of these questions. Or maybe sometimes you'll need to use two or three rather than all. But the case is that we're going to need to use more than one. Now, the thing is, Long ago, when mathematics came to be, people just basically realized that we actually need to decide how to tackle these questions because addition, multiplication, subtraction, and division, all of these are quite complex things, right? So if you do them in different orders, you're going to get completely different results. So pretty much what happened is that long ago, everyone decided we're going to basically follow this exact rule called bod mass. Now, Depending on what country you're from, you may have heard different kind of names, but fundamentally it's the exact same thing. Basically what bod mass is, it's a handy dandy mathematics rule that you should always use whenever you're doing questions. So in order, we always want to do any brackets you see in the question, then any orders, and orders actually means if there's any powers or roots present, you do that. And then you can do either division or multiplication in any order and addition and subtraction in any order. So remembering bod mass is going to ensure that you get the correct answer. And if you don't follow bod mass, even if you did all the maths correctly, you might not get the proper answer that we want. So it's always, always remember to, very important to remember this golden rule whenever we do algebra. So we're going to take a look at a quick example of what a mixed operations question can look like. Now, obviously, there are plenty of different examples. So the big takeaway for this video would be to kind of understand the skills you need to do these questions rather than trying to get just the answer. So for this particular example, we're given the cost of various different fruits. We're given the cost of an apple and a banana costing $3, an apple and a carrot costing $4, and a banana and one carrot costing $5. Now we want to know how much just one apple costs. Since we're given the costs of combinations of fruits, we can't just figure it out. We're going to need to use some algebra. So how do we do this question? Well, because it's an algebraic question, it's going to be very simple if we convert this question, all of these words into a series of equations. So because writing out apple, banana and carrot is a bit cumbersome and takes a lot of time, what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the alphabet letters to represent each fruit type. So for convenience sake, let's call apple A, banana B and carrot C. It's always easy to choose letters that you can easily realize which what thing it represents. 
So arbitrary letters, but choosing A, B, and C, we can now convert these into equations. So since we're told that one apple and one banana together cost $3, the word together symbolizes addition. So we can convert this first sentence into A plus B is equal to $3. And in the very much the same way, we can represent the other three uh, sentences like so. So now we have a series of equations. Now, what do we do? Well, looking at these equations, these aren't immediately solvable. And the reason is because we have two different things that we don't know the number of. We don't know what A is, we don't know what B is, or we don't know what C is. So that kind of stops us from going any further. So your next step is actually going to be to try and reduce the letters as much as possible in each of these equations. So if, for example, if we only had the letter A in this equation and this B was actually a letter A, we could gather the like terms and find out what A is. So let's try to do exactly that. Now, there's actually a bunch of different ways you can tackle this question. So we might actually go through both of them just to realize how flexible we can be with algebraic op operations. But uh, the first method would be to try and isolate one letter. So let's say we want to write everything in terms of the letter A. So taking this first equation, A plus B is equal to $3, I'm actually going to make B the subject, which means that B is the only thing to the side of the equal sign. And everything else goes to the other side of the equal sign. So this equation and this equation is exactly the same. It's just rewritten. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the second equation here, where I make C the subject. So we get, sorry, I should not forget the dollar sign, uh, $4 minus A. Now, the reason we chose B and C to be the subject is because whatever is on the other side of the equal sign is now represented only with numbers and the letter A. Here is where we now use a very useful algebraic technique called substitution. So realizing that since B is equal to 3 minus A, we can actually rewrite this third equation without using the letter B, but instead putting this in place of the letter B since they are equal. So this last equation over here can be rewritten as $3 minus A plus C is equal to $5. Now, remember our goal is to reduce the number of letters as possible. So right now we still have two letters, which doesn't help us, which is why this equation also comes in handy. Instead of writing the letter C, we're going to replace it with four minus A. So let's do exactly that. $4 minus A is equal to $5. So now all that's left is to simplify this equation. Gathering all, all the numbers on this side, we get 3 plus 4, which is equal to $7. And also gathering all of the letters, which is minus A minus A, giving us minus 2A is equal to $5. So it, then again, making sure that all the numbers are on one side and all the letters are on the other side of the equal sign, we get $7 minus $5, which is equal to 2A, giving us 1A is equal to $1. So we would say that answer option A is the correct answer. Now, that was a lot of steps, and there's actually a different method, which is fundamentally using the same kind of idea of substitution, but just a different approach, I would say. And it's completely valid as well. It just depends on what you prefer to do. So up until this point, the strategy is exactly the same. But what I'm actually going to do is realize that I can add all three of these equations together. So... Uh, if I add this entire three things together, let's start with the easy part. These numbers on one side of the equal sign can just be added together. So 3 plus 4 plus 5 is equal to, what is it, uh, 12. Now, on the other side of the equal sign, it's slightly more complicated because we have A plus B plus A plus C plus B plus C. So gathering like terms, we have 2A plus 2b plus 
to C is equal to $12. Now, this means that since everything in this equation is divisible by 2, I'm actually going to do that. Divide the, it, oops, the entire equation by 2 to give me A plus B plus C is equal to $6. So, why have I done this when all I talked about before was talking about removing as much of the letters as possible to try and get an answer? Well, I'm actually going to do exactly that. See how in this equation we have A plus B plus C is equal to $6. See how we also have B plus C is equal to $5. So, theoretically, I could make this substitution, replacing the letters B plus C with the number 5. And that actually reduces the number of letters in our equation to just the letter A. And now it is awfully convenient to figure out that the A is equal to number 1. So even if we use a slightly different formula, the correct answer was still achieved. So this is kind of just an example to show you how there's just a lot of ways you can tackle algebraic equations. So once you get kind of used to the strategies, it's, it can be quite an easier topic because you've just got so much flexibility and you can choose whichever kind of style is easiest for you. So with that, this completes this example and leads us to the end of the video. I hope this was of some help in answering these styles of questions in the future.